thirsty, are you empty? Come and drink these giving waters. Tired and broken, peace unspoken, rest beside these living waters. Christ is calling, find refreshing at the cross of living waters. Lay your life down, all the old rise up in these living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. Spirit moving, mercy washing, healing in these living waters. Lead your children to the shore. Life is in these living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of thirsty, are you empty? Come and drink these living waters. Love, forgiveness, past and boundaries. Christ, He is our living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. Oh, 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 oh. Good morning, church family. It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, today's service is a little bit different to the usual, where I've got lots of contributions from everybody. My week didn't quite go as planned, and so I just had to make another plan. And so today it's uh, just me. I hope I'm not too boring for you. And I pray that the service would be meaningful and uh, that you would meet God as we worship together this morning. Our scripture will be from Matthew chapter 9. And Matthew chapter 9 and 10, most of it from chapter 10, verse 44 to 46, looking at what it means for Jesus to be talking about hospitality in those, chap in those verses. And we've been uh, following that theme all along. And as I'm talking to you, I'm also looking for the next song to sing before I begin our prayers. Give me a second. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for helping us to worship together online in a different place. I thank you that I can share this message from my home and on such a cold and rainy Saturday afternoon that I can be warm. And so, Lord, I just pray that that warmth that, that each of us has would stretch out to everybody around us and that we would share something of what we have with all of those who are in need. Lord, as we gather, as we feel so far away, I ask that through your Holy Spirit's power, you would comfort us and strengthen us and help us to know that we are never alone because you are always nearby us because of your Holy Spirit's power and presence. Amen. Anyways, thank you very much for inviting us to be with you today. And uh, 
a church we'd normally say that everybody is welcome here no matter who you are or where you are in your faith journey and i extend that message to you even from our, my home so today part of the message is about listening for what god has to say to us and so we'll sing uh, him your words Life that's never ending, your words bring us Love that never fails, everything else will fade away But what will remain are your words Else will fade away But your words are the one thing that remains and so as we come to you, we confess that we sometimes live by stories that are not the ones that you are telling. When you teach us to love and to share and to be kind, we learn from the world that these qualities, these laws of life are not common to all people. And so we ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to share more of your love, more of your joy, more of your grace with all of the world. So as we confess our lack of listening to your words and our lack of speaking your words, we ask for your mercy and your forgiveness. And even as these words of confession are on our lips, we hear your words of grace spoken into each and every one of our hearts. As you say to us, my child, your sins are forgiven. And you say to us, go and sin no more. And so, Lord, we hear those words, and we know that our sins are forgiven. And through your Holy Spirit, you breathe into us the power to live lives that are improved. 
to live lives that are free from sin, that are lived in power with you, because you are good to us. And so, Lord, as we continue to listen to your word read and explained, we ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to each of our hearts and help us not to go away from this morning's worship unchanged. Breathe into us now, we pray. Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. As I was preparing to do this service, I uh, was looking for an NIV version of the Bible. And I found this old Bible of mine, which I've had, uh, I think, for, for all of this century. And it used to be a soft cover Bible until a friend of mine uh, put a hard cover on it. But the other funny thing about it, besides the, the writing being so small, I can hardly read it anymore. So I must be getting a little older. Uh, on a rainy day like this, I was stuck hiking somewhere uh, in the United Kingdom and it got soggy. And in my backpack, it all got wet. But it's still there. And of all my paper Bibles, this is the only one I've read from cover to cover. One holiday, I decided that I would, I would read through it. And I must say, it was a very good uh, experience. If you're at a loss for things to do, uh, why not read the whole Bible? You might have time. Anyways, we're going to read from Matthew chapter 10. The main uh, scripture is from Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. So small, I can hardly find it. Uh, to 42. But I'm just going to add another one from verse 11 through 16 to add to that, to 15, sorry. So from Matthew 10, verse 11. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. And then from verse 42, 40. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives the one, he who receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. At the beginning of this uh, lockdown, and actually, in fact, just before the lockdown, I took a picture of the empty church and I made a, a sign for it that said, the church has left the building and it had nothing to do with lockdown. I just was, I thought that was quite a clever thing to remind us that the church building is not the church and the church is the people and in that situation the people weren't in the church anymore and so the church had left the building but now that we are not able to meet in our building it seems more appropriate but the thing that we need to say is that that church has left the building thing is talking about how the church is alive and well out in the world doing its mission it's not really a good thing that the church is not in its building but we do understand why we need to not be in our building for now, and we look forward to returning to it as soon as possible. 
And so we also pray that as this time continues, this difficult time of of the peak infection, as they say in the Western Cape, we pray that everybody will be safe. And remember week, uh, the first three weeks when you had lock, stage five lockdown, if you can do stage five lockdown at this time, carry on doing that because at this time you are most at risk for catching COVID out uh, in the shops or, or wherever you go because many people have been infected. Several folks at church have been infected with the COVID virus. Uh, I, they haven't asked me to tell anybody or anything like that, so I don't really want to go and make a list of those who, who have uh, been diagnosed with COVID. But uh, please uh, keep everybody in your prayers. Uh, this is a very serious disease. And uh, a reminder that most people survive COVID, but for those who 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 experience it as a as a very severe illness it is very dangerous and uh, a, a horrible experience so we keep everybody in our prayers but don't lose uh, you know don't panic um, stay hopeful things might n not be as bad as they seem i think that we sometimes think that things are are out of control when we when we know that they they can we can we'll survive I think one of the things about the whole lockdown and everything is to know that the reason for the lockdown is that we want to prevent overwhelming the hospital facilities. Uh, so that's that's um, quite heavy going, but the sort of good and bad news is that the hospital facilities aren't that great anyways. And so um, by avoiding overcrowding the hospitals, we are really trying to keep um, infections down to a minimum. And most people who have been infected have recovered. But at this time, we are going through the highest infection and uh, ask everybody to please stay safe, to pray for those who are sick and to uplift everybody. And then also it was a sad Friday morning for me this Friday as I baptized uh, a baby, James, the son of Celeste. and. Uh, not many of you know, know Celeste, she's new to our community, lives right near the church. Um, and James passed away in the night on Thursday night. And so I baptized him on Friday morning, reminding us of the hope that we have in resurrection and life. And it really was a profound moment. And I'm sharing it with you because we'd normally baptize in church on a Sunday. And so we recognize James as one of the children members of our church who has passed on. And uh, James, who was three months old, will be buried from our church on Sunday, or his funeral will be on Sunday the 5th of July, but uh, normal service will continue on video, and those invited to the memorial service for James will, will be there with me on the 5th of July. So keep Celeste and her family in your prayers, and, uh, you know, um, Pray for everybody who, who who loses children in such a way. It seems like it was sudden infant death syndrome. So please keep Celeste in your prayers and keep everybody who suffers and struggles in your prayers. But also remember with joy the name of a little boy whose name was James and who is comforted and consoled in Jesus' arms today. Back to Matthew chapter 10. There's a, a, a theologian, Emmanuel Katangole, writes, even in a deeply divided world, even in the most deeply divided relationship, the way things are is not the way things have to be. What we need is not simply better gear and techniques, but a story that helps us remember another world is possible. The good news is that God's story offers us just that. In the midst of our world's deep brokenness, God's kingdom breaks in to create new possibilities. And you could pause the video there if you're watching it on video and, and just uh, think about that quote. The good news is that God's story offers us a different way of healing the world. And over the past few weeks, we've been talking about Matthew chapter 10. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus sends out his disciples to spread the gospel. 
we might get distracted by what we think is impressive that he was sending them out to heal and to cure diseases and all of those things and we might think well that would be quite useful right now but the most important part of what Jesus sent his disciples to do is told to us in Matthew 10 verse 7 preach this message the kingdom of heaven is near and so they go out to preach the anticipatory news of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven the good news about God and I remind us often that an evangelist in in the New Testament time would be somebody who would go out and announce that a new king had taken over the land and that there were now new laws and new values in place there was a new story that everyone was to live by and this is what the gospel was the gospel was the good news that God is king and everything else isn't and so we think of the kingdom that we pray for when we say the Lord's Prayer when we say your kingdom come your will be done we're not saying oh I just surrender to to the brokenness of this world we are saying let's turn the world the way it is upside down and let's see the healing of this world let's see God's will being done instead of our will let God's healing come instead of our brokenness and so they go out to proclaim that God's will as opposed to the will of man and the brokenness of the world be done and so when people say that they think that COVID is COVID-19 is God's will you need to correct them and say no this is the circumstance of the time this is the circumstance of the world this is circumstantial will of God God can take the brokenness of this moment and turn it around for good but that doesn't mean that we can say this is what God had planned for the world I would think that we'd have to reckon that if we had spent less money on military and less money on luxury we could have spent more money on medicine and by now there'd be cures for such diseases but instead the world continues to invest in war and division and brokenness and greed so we can't say that something like COVID-19 is God's will we have to say this is something that's happened because of our brokenness and our sin and God as well is that it would be healed and cured and God has given us the scientific knowledge the, the, the time and the expertise to deal with with issues like this and God's will would be that we had overcome this disease but God's will is also that when bad circumstances happen through the grace of his healing and love remember that verse by his wounds were healed he takes the woundedness of the world that we live in and he turns that into resurrection and he takes the woundedness that we experience and turns that into life so that we find ourselves healed this is the the will of God the kingdom of God that we pray for in Romans chapter 14 verse 7 it's described as righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit just think about that and what it means for the community in which we live imagine if when we went out onto the streets we didn't see bitterness and anger and we didn't see injustice we didn't see this unsettling brokenness of relationships but instead when we met with people wherever we went whatever suburb bad or good we found that people were righteous there was justice there was there was a good relationship between people and God there was peace there was shalom imagine that kind of sense of community that there was shalom that that if you were in need you could go to your neighbor and ask for something if if someone else was in need there would be no shame in coming to you to ask for some because there'd be shalom between you that that desire to lift each other up and make sure that everybody has what they need righteousness peace and joy the will of God is that there be joy in the world that we would smile and and laugh and have fun when we see the good things that happen around us that that when we see others enjoying their lives when we see others celebrating we had celebrate too and and that all in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit so all of these things are embodied in what the disciples are called to go and do in Matthew 10 verse 8 heal the sick raise the dead cleanse those who have leprosy drive out demons freely you have received freely give he tells them the disciples are instructed not to take anything with them not to take any bags of clothes not to take any money may just one stick to keep yourself going when you're on 
on on the road nothing nothing else but but the knowledge of the story of god's kingdom nothing else but the knowledge of the story of god's love and with that knowledge to proclaim healing and deliverance from demons and cleansing of lepers uh, to freely give and to show the world a way of giving freely a way that would probably upset those who control and hold power in the world in a way that actually upsets some because imagine that uh, what jesus described some people won't want you to to come and preach this message they're going to reject you when you reach a town and somebody says you're not welcome here or you feel like you're not welcome just shake the dust of your feet and move on because some people don't want to hear this good news about the love and grace of god that brings healing and restoration and reconciliation they bring the good news of the kingdom of God. The good news that God is king and you are not. But we don't want to hear that because we like to be the kings ourselves. The good news is that God is king and, and Caesar is not. The government is not king. Jesus is king. The good news that God is king and death is not. That death does not have the final say, the final victory over all of us. The good news that God is king and your bank account and the money that you have in your pocket or in your wallet is not king. The emptiness of your bank account or the fullness of your bank account doesn't define who you are. He reminds us you can't serve two masters. You have one king. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other, says Matthew 6 verse 24. You cannot serve both God and money. And so all of these things that the disciples come to do, they come to proclaim the kingdom of God, to tell the good news. They come with nothing in their pockets, nothing in their bags, because they come just to tell the good news about the free gift of God's grace. And this news is not always welcome. In fact, we know that sometimes when we hear the good news of the kingdom of God, we react in a certain way because when we hear the good news of the kingdom of God, we realize that it means that something about the way that we live should change. Something about the way that we value ourselves or the value the things that we own or value, value money and power and strength should change. And we're not that delighted to let go of the things that we hold on to. We're actually quite blind when we hear the truth about how we should turn around or change, we're quite blind. And sometimes we get angry and we say something like, hey, but but you, but you, what, what are you saying? But you, what, you know, how we are when we listen to this good news. And sometimes when you go about telling this good news, expect people to react in a certain way and to be treated in a certain way. And so when you get treated in a certain way, Jesus reminds us to, to move on to go your way but he does give a warning he says i tell you the truth that will be more bearable for sodom and gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town it will be more bearable for sodom and gomorrah on the day of judgment and you know that sounds terrible we remember what happened to those towns and remember what they represent but but ezekiel chapter 16 verse 49 describes the sin of sodom and it's probably not what you think. Now, this was your, the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. That's the sin of Sodom. Overfed, arrogant, and unconcerned. This is why people don't want to hear the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. This is why you don't want to hear the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Because because you're arrogant, overfed, unconcerned, and you don't help the poor and needy. And as I say that, I'm looking at the screen on my camera. And that guy in there is saying it to me too. Because I think I might be one of those people who is overfed, unconcerned, and not very helpful to the poor and needy. We're not good listeners. We only hear what we want to hear. We only live by the story that we want to live by. We live by the story that says you've got to amass wealth for yourself. You've got to keep yourself secure. You've got to look after number one without looking after anybody else. You've got to make sure that you're okay and everybody else survives. And so in verses 40 to 42, Jesus speaks about how people receive the people who go out, the disciples, 
to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, the disciples are not just going to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. They're going to call others, pray for harvesters because we need more harvesters. And they're going to also preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, remember, these harvesters are not just there to, to, to cut off the sheaves of grain and make sure they go to heaven. They're there to participate in the making of a whole loaf of bread, which will be the community of the kingdom of God. Not just the end of the whole story, the gospel message. But the gospel message of a transformed community is what they're going out to preach. If they receive you, they receive me, says Jesus. If they receive a prophet, and the prophet is somebody who has an uncomfortable word for the time, get over the idea that prophet is somebody who predicts the future. That's not what prophets normally do in the Old Testament. Read the Old Testament. The prophets say, this is what's happening. This is what's going to happen. This is God's will. And and if you carry on like this, if you carry on neglecting the poor and the broken, you're going to end up in trouble. This is what a prophet does. He, they, It was something said of a journalist, a good journalist, uh, comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. And that's what a good prophet does too. He finds those little niggles in you that, that need to be called out and calls them out so that you, you change. If you receive a prophet, let him come and stay in your house. Let him come and live at your dining room table and, 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 and tell you a few things that you don't want to hear. Then you will receive the same reward as the prophet. If you receive one of these disciples who comes and tells the story of the gospel of the kingdom of God and you spend time at your dining room table with this person and you listen to what he has to say, you will be transformed and, and you will receive the same reward. If anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. What Jesus is inviting us to do, I think, is to listen. He's inviting us to consider how we go out on mission and how we allow ourselves to be received or rejected and we don't take it personally. We, we move on. We send love. But how we are to receive those who have a message for us. And we're so used to only listening to those that we agree with. I've grown so much by learning to read books written by people that I disagree with. Sometimes if you come and look at my bookshelf, you'll see that I have the words of some prominent atheists, some books from them, like Richard Dawkins, and he's not a very good atheist if you ask me. But I have to read them because then I think about what I believe and I become more secure in my faith. When I was reading a lot of liberal work, I realized that I needed to read more conservative work and I, and I became... Uh, more aware of what different people were thinking was able to adjust my thinking a little bit with more compassion and kindness. This is what listening with a glass of water does. When you present one of these disciples with a glass of water, you give them a chance to bend your ear. And as they bend your ear, you, you understand their vulnerability because they're thirsty. You understand what they're saying to you because you understand their woundedness and their, their vulnerability and their brokenness and, 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 and that they're just like you. They need water to survive. In Jesus' time, when he says, I'll give you a cup of water, they didn't just have taps like we do at home. We can just run some out of the garden tap, even if we're in a hurry. But they'd have to go and get some of that water that they'd carried from a river or a, a well somewhere far away. You only know the value of water when you have to carry it around like we did when there was a drought. And I wish we had had today's rain that I was just watching out my window during the drought. But when we give something of value to one of those people who comes to speak to us, we learn to listen more carefully to them. And these days of Facebook and social media, social media tends to surround you with people who agree with you. The more you like stuff, the more you'll see stuff like that because Facebook wants to, to make you happy and content and sit there liking everything. And then sometimes if you get into an argument with something about somebody about something, they'll also give you more of that because they pick up that you're somebody who actually likes to be angry. And so you get into arguments and, and, and you end up believing false things about others and you end up sharing false things about others. And it's this big gossip fest that you get involved in but you tend only to hear your side of the story. In this real life encounter, 
we were invited to share a glass of water. We were invited to listen carefully to others. And it's a word, I think, for each and every one of us to listen to what others have to say. Because like Jesus says, when you receive a prophet, when you receive a disciple, when you receive one of these people, you receive me. And in each and every person we meet, there might be a word from God. It doesn't mean that everybody's always right. It doesn't mean that we have to say yes and amen to everybody. But we have to learn to understand with that gift of a glass of water and hospitality. Henry Nouwen writes, Listening is much more than allowing another to talk while waiting for a chance to respond. Listening is paying full attention to others and welcoming them into our very beings. The beauty of listening is that those who are listened to start feeling accepted, start taking their words more seriously and discovering their own true selves. Listening is a form of spiritual hospitality by which you invite strangers to become friends, to get to know their inner selves more fully, and even to dare to be silent with you. If you want to hear the gospel of Jesus, you need to listen. If I want to hear the gospel of Jesus, I need to listen. I need to be hospitable. I need to invite others in and share a glass of water with them for a meal or even my home. So much so that I begin to understand their experience and their brokenness and, and, and who they are and what they're going through. So that even if initially I disagree with them, I might understand their point of view. I pray that this helps us as, as I see more and more how people get divided. Masks, no masks. Uh, lockdown, no lockdown this political party, that political party. Let's learn to listen and create this alternative story, which is the story of the kingdom of God, where we put our faith in Jesus and not in ourselves and our own power. Amen. Tell me the old, old story of unseen things above. Of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. Tell me the story simply, as to a little child. For I am weak and weary, and helpless and defiled. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story, tell me the old, old story of Jesus and His love. Tell me the story slowly, that I may take it in, that wonderful redemption, God's remedy for sin. Tell me the story often, for I forget too soon. The early dew of morning has passed away at noon. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story of Jesus and His love. Tell me the story softly, with earnest tones and grave. Remember I'm the sinner whom Jesus came to save. Tell me the story always, if you would really be. In any times of trouble, a comforter to me. Tell me the old, old story, tell me the old, old story, tell me the old, old story of Jesus and His love. Tell me the same old story when you have cause to fear that this world's empty glory is costing me too dear. 
Yes, and when that world's glory is dawning on my soul, tell me the old, old story, Christ Jesus makes me whole. Tell me the old, old story, tell me the old, old story, tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.